Assalamu guys. Shnaha alaikum alaikum. I hope you all are doing well. I'm sitting here drinking some tea because my <coughs> throat is so sore. But I thought I'm, I just need to do this with video mostly because it's going to contain two parts. One part is when I talk to you about something very dear to me, and then the second part is a little mini haul of the, something, some items I just bought recently that I need to wear. So I need to do this so I can wear the clothes. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Hi, I want to address something that I've talked about a lot during my years of vlogging, especially during 2018 and 19, and that is the hijab struggle. Go figure. But I will take it briefly. I'm not going to make this a long video. Just say some words that might make anyone out there who is struggling at the moment you know, feel like they're not alone or feel like they're, they can relate or just feel encouraged to go through even though they're struggling. So, you know, the hijab struggle, just that in itself, it's very, very, you know, hush hush. You can't talk about it. If you talk about it, that is, you know, an immediate sign of your weak iman, which makes you a, not a good Muslim, etc, etc. But that's not the truth. Being Weak in your Iman is completely normal. It's what you do during this weakness that defines what kind of person you are or what kind of Muslim you are. It's not, you know, that you feel weak that makes you less of a good Muslim. Actually, the truth of the fact is, being weak in your Iman might make you sin. Uh, and I think that's what people, you know, connect this topic with, you know, that you know, being weak in your man makes you a sinner. It makes you a sinner, maybe, or it just makes you very, very depressed. And yes, the man, your faith is something that is very dear and precious to you. So when you feel like it's out of balance, of course you feel like it's hard to get up in the mornings. It's hard to, you know, for instance, if you are being weak in your hijab, part of your iman is going to make you feel like it's hard to get out of your house it is hard to put the hijab on it is hard to dress but the thing is it is so important to talk about this it is so important not to you know hold it in and feel ashamed of those feelings it is so important to address those feelings and feel them and actually you know try to process them and define what makes you stronger and it, what it is that is making you weak in this particular you know part of this religion for us women and for me, it has so many different reasons when I feel weak in my hijab. When I decided to put my hijab on, I just started practicing. I was, you know, deep in the religion. I was learning stuff. I was feeding my soul, feeding my heart with new things about the religion that made me embrace it even more, you know? So hijab was like a natural step in that process. And, you know, when you're new in something, it's like a flower. If you water it, it will fl flourish, but if you don't, then it will die. And it's the same thing with your Iman, you know? If you don't feed your soul with new, you know, knowledge about the religion, with new feelings of excitement about the religion, it's going to, you know, just go down the hill. Does that make sense? Most of us feel like we don't look good in our hijab because we look much better without it. And that is what happens it, when you're in a society that is so fixed with everything that has to do with beauty and ideals for a woman, it makes you weak not to fit into those norms and standards, you know? And so many men think that women, you know, try to make themselves look good for other men, but the truth of the fact is that often most of us, you know, we like to look good in context where there's other women, you know? We like to look good for ourselves and we like to also look good when we see other beautiful women and that is the truth. So when we have all these pretty ladies going around and we don't look as pretty as them from the standard perspective, you know, of how a woman should look and dress, it makes us feel weak and it is completely normal. What we need to do is we need to find moments where we get to feel that way, you know, feel as pretty. We need to create those moments for ourselves. One of my tips that I always tell people who tell me what to do when they're struggling is to talk about it when you feel bad. Don't be ashamed. You are entitled to your own feelings and there's nothing wrong with the way you're feeling, okay? Two, 
try to pray on it a lot and ask the people who are closest to you to pray on it you know because if your da for some reason is not accepted at the moment someone else's will inshallah and every time you pray for someone else the angels actually pray back to you so it's a win-win situation some prayers are going to get accepted you know <laughs> that's what i tell myself and you know when i was struggling with my hijab i asked everyone to pray for me i was like please 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 pray for me I just maybe your da is going to be accepted. The next is to actually create those environments where you get to feel nice and pretty, which means all girls party, girls night in, dress up, doll up, you know, doll, get a hairdo, get your hair dyed, get whatever, just you know, go the extra mile to feel just like anyone else is feeling all the time. But you know, in, during that particular party or wedding or whatever, if it's like an all girls party or all girls event, you know, you know, for some weddings, I'm like, okay, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take off my hijab today on this wedding because I just I haven't had my hair done. But instead, I should think, okay, maybe this is a good opportunity for me to go to the hairdresser and get my hair dyed or get a haircut, you know? So that is, and I know a lot of us mamas struggle with this, you know, pampering ourselves, taking care of ourselves because we put everyone else first. And or maybe for like struggling students, we don't have time to go to the hairdresser and spend four hours there while we have to study for this exam. But sometimes you need to do that. You need to take the time to nurture, nurture your inner beauty and your exterior beauty you know do you in the best way you can uh, buy those heels you know put that makeup on off hijab i call this off hijab moments you know and in your on hijab moments also find the style that makes you feel like you own your hijab you rock your hijab within the you know standards of uh, a modest hijab of course just make your on hijab and your off hijab go together so they make you empowered and you know boost yourself next uh, tip is to actually seek more knowledge i know this sounds so cliche but it's not actually it is exactly the way it is if you seek more knowledge and if you learn new things about your dean it will it will nurture your soul and it will make you feel better i promise you another tip i have is to actually if you see a sister who goes from one certain style backwards you know a step backwards to another certain style you know don't point that out instead ask her like what you can do for her how is she feeling don't address the the changes right away instead talk around them in a way that makes her feel like you're interested in her well-being and interested in actually helping her in some way okay the best way to address this whether it is something you're close to or not is actually just you know talk around it and find ways to give um tips and helpful advice without you know pointing out the obvious wait let me check my phone i keep my notes before my videos so i know what to talk to you about because i talk so much so sometimes it gets out of hand you know during these past few years we've seen a lot of sisters online and offline take off their hijab and it's you know i don't know as a hijabi myself i feel so sad every time someone takes off her hijab because it's my sister you know in the deen it's like we're, the ummah is one body and if one Part of it hurts, everyone is hurting. And when I see a sister take off, I, this is my God, it's just, I feel like I'm gonna get tears in my eyes. If one sister takes her hijab off, it just means that the struggle and the pain that I was feeling, she was feeling it too. But she just couldn't, you know, it, she, she just couldn't handle it. And that means that it must have been so, so massive. So, you know, it is so important to be there for those sisters who are struggling, you know, in the smallest bit. And say words like, if you're thinking about removing it, what then? You know, the what then and the what ifs are questions you always should ask yourself once you're going to do something that is actually a sin. We can't, you know, beat around the bush. It is a sin. So if you're thinking about doing that, you should always think, what if? And what then? I removed my hijab. It's a major sin. I've chosen to, you know, turn my back on Allah's guidance for me when it comes to such a big part of my religion. What then? I remove it. And then what? Am I going to put it back on? Am I really going to put it back on? Or do I tell myself that to justify the action I just did? You know what I mean? And if I'm going to put it back on, what if? I die before that 
Or what if something else happens to me? What if something happens to the way I look? That is going to make it even worse than how I looked before in my hijab. You know what I mean? If we're going to talk about it in different perspectives. So the what ifs and the what and then what are very, very big questions to ask yourself once you are in the stage of, you know, deciding I am going to remove my hijab or take off my hijab. These questions always makes me, you know, take a step back and, and be like, okay, no, this life is really, really, really nothing to count on because it just can't be taken away from you just like that. Anything in your life can be taken away from you just like that. So to think about those things actually makes me stronger and it helps me remove those thoughts once they take over my brain, you know? Short tips that many of you probably already know about that many of you already heard before, but it is worth being reminded of them again and again and again and again because I know how it is to struggle. I've struggled for so many years with my hijab, but you know, we, and a lot of us are still struggling and we, and we hang in there and it's important to hang in there, but we need a support system and we need ways to think about this so we can accept and move on, you know what I mean? And plus the world is already against us. We can't be against our own, you know, everyone else hates my hijab how can i hate it when it's a part of me and it's a part of my religion and it's a part of something that god has commanded for me for my own good you know so i don't want to be with those who the islamophobic people who already hates on my hijab i want to be with team hijab you know yeah so i don't know i talk fast i know <laughs> and i say a lot of things i don't know if anything made sense but hopefully you could find something that you can take with you to heart and Maybe, you know, try to help a friend out, help yourself out, anyone else around you who are struggling. And know that Allah is always there. And if you are struggling with your hijab and you've removed it, it's never too late to put it on again. And if you're thinking about removing it, just try to hold on one more day and one more day and one more day. And suddenly you're holding on for a year or two or three. And at some point you will start loving it again. You will start embracing it again and you will start you know, seeing the beauty that you once saw and decided to wear. And now I'm going to get the clothes I've been wanting to wear for ages. You know, we just started the new semester and I was like, oh, okay, I'm wearing my old clothes still. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I have new clothes so I wanted to wear them. So I'm gonna go get them and I'll be right back. So, let's start guys. First one is from Boohoo. Let's start with this one then, guys. Oh, look at I'm going to try to show you how all of these look on at the end of the video. But it is a um, striped midi dress. It's navy blue with uh, semi mustard stripes, I think, in white. And it has a pocket here that it has buttons all the way down here. So, this was the first one. And now I'm so excited for this one. It's that corded shirt. I have one of these in green, but it has a belt on it. And I would like one that doesn't have a belt on it. Oh my god. Whoa. Okay, so girls, details. Looks like this. It's kind of peplum, peplum shirt. Oh my god. I'm already in love. It's also very, oh, I'm like flipping my hijab here. Very excited for this one. I've always wanted to do one of these guys. You have no idea. I'm, I always watch hauls on YouTube. I think those are most fun because it's fun seeing people open things. So, oh, so excited for this one. It's wanna be Versace, but who cares? I already have one goosey, so. I'm gonna try all of these on and then I'll film it for you in different looks, okay? Now, first one. It is so lovely, don't you think? So whenever I wear something that has a belt on it, I always have this hijab style, you know, that covers all the way in the back. And I also pin it in the dress. On the dress, I mean. So this is the second one. I hate that I might have needed to iron them first, but who cares, you know. They're just newly opened. I love it. 
it's cord, you know, so how can you not love it? Do you guys like it? Third look, you guys. I think I like this kind of look more, you know, the longer midi dress rather than the ones that come to here because I just feel like these are more elegant. And let's see the fourth and last look. Last look, you guys, blending in very well with my surroundings. Anyways, so, love it. This also has like a turtleneck, so I might wear the different hijab style, I'll see. Anyways, so this is it. This is it, y'all. It has balloon sleeves. So guys, if you wanna see more of this content and you know, uh, hijabi friendly outfits, unboxing, hauls, tell me that in my comment section on YouTube because I want to have it all under the same video so I can go back and check. When it's spread out all over the place then I might not find it. Anyways, I enjoyed making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and I see you when I see you. Bye!